Hey, we're going to do some globe basics. And I'll be honest with you, this is there's a lot to this. So bear with me. We'll do the best job we can. But I'm going to try to set you up for some success here. And generally, when we do these videos, I like to make sure that you guys can organize things in your paper. And we use some folds to do that. So we're going to start with folding it like a hamburger style. Now we're going to fold it one more time. And keep in mind, if this is too much for you, slow it down, stop the video, do what you got to do. Be successful. Do your best. You can do it. We kind of believe in you. Okay. Now you see I've got this broken into four, four chunks. Or quadrants is what I'd call them. And I want to try to level these things out a little bit. For starters, I'm going to take, I use a Sharpie, use what you want to use. I'm going to take two fingers. I'll put a little tick mark right here on this bottom line. See the edge of the paper? I'm going to go up and do the same thing, two fingers. Now I know everybody's got different size fingers. Just like I said, use, this, use what you got. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use three fingers. And over here, same thing. I'm going to use three fingers. Be perfect. But I'm trying to make something kind of equal between the four sides. Now, we're going to title this thing. We're going to write down Globe Basics. But my globe, I'm going to put in a kapow box. Because I'm going to talk about that in just a couple minutes here. Okay. A globe, in case you don't know, is a spherical, fancy word, a spherical shape of the earth. All right. And what do we use for our kapow colors? Always use a little yellow. You got a colored pencil. Use a little bit of a marker this time because, well, I just, I'm gonna, because I want to. So I have that power. Now, we got a piece of paper with a couple tick marks on it. We don't have a globe. So let's go ahead and make a globe, okay? We're gonna connect this dot to this dot. Now, here's the hard part you do not get to draw a straight line. You get to round out just about in the middle of your little square here. Right about in the middle of that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around. I'm a little off already, but that's okay. So I'm eyeballing, you see. It's not going to be perfect. I don't care if it's perfect. Does that look like a perfect square or circle? Absolutely not. But you know what? It's good enough for what we're going to do. Because we're not trying to make perfection. We're just trying to get a circle or kind of a circle. Because the globe is not a perfect circle anyway. In fact, the globe is actually wider than it is tall. If you don't know what that means, it means there's an imaginary line. that separates it from top to bottom. This is what we call the Northern Hemisphere, which we can talk about later. This is the Southern Hemisphere. And this invisible line is something we call the equator. I'm gonna make a kapow box for that. Imaginary line that divides the earth into the northern and southern hemispheres.
ran out of room there, so I had to get creative with that. And once again, that is a vocab word. So we're going to give that a little kapow box too. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Imaginary line. You notice how I, I kind of beveled this? I kind of made it look like it was drooping a little bit. Well, because I want the, the earth round. It, it's got a shape. It's a 3D. If you kind of lower this a little bit and droop it like a hammock, it's going to look more 3D for you. And the equator is one of a number of lines that come this way. These lines are called latitude lines. I say latitude, latitude. I know other people have a better way of saying it, but I'm going to put a little... I call them memory boxes or think aloud boxes. When I think of an equator, I want to think of latitude. And these lines are parallel. Yes, fancy, fancy word. Which means they never, ever cross. They're parallel lines. And that's different than a meridian line because meridians... They go this way and this way. In fact, you may not know this, but the Earth balances on these little things called an axis. And that axis allows the Earth to tip back and forth, back and forth. And these imaginary lines, they do cross. They cross at two points. This is called the prime meridian. It is once again a made up line. But this is an imaginary line. That divides the earth. into eastern and western hemispheres. And once again, I'm going to put a kapow box in there because, well, by golly, this is a vocab word. we got to know this word. Now, if you don't know much about the prime meridian, understand these imaginary lines go all the way around, all the way, all the way. They keep going around. And when we talk about time zones, like if you move from Iowa to California or Iowa to New York, that changes with time zone. Those are imaginary changes that align with this prime meridian. So... When we think about these lines, I want you to also think about another think aloud box. Longitude lines. Now, if you were to take these lines and connect them with your latitude lines, these little dots like that, these are called coordinates. And I'm not going to give this to you as a vocab word, but I want you to think about your GPS. Your GPS on your phone helps you connect with all these dots, all these lines that intersect, and that's how they tell you where you're at in relationship to other things on the Earth. Because that GPS is connected to this little bitty satellite up here, that goes around the earth and, and it, it basically tracks you wherever you're at. So coordinates are an important thing, not just in the military, but they're in, in, in important in a lot of things. And um, even if you're just trying to get from place to place and you don't know your own directions, that's what those GPS coordinates are all about. So we know we got a globe, spherical shape of the earth. We know these prime meridian lines, the prime meridian versus the equator. And we don't have to do this, but I like to 
Look at the little color to these Think Aloud boxes. That way they kind of pop up the page a little bit. I know they're important to think about, like a little cloud. Okay. We're good to go. We made up. We're ready to keep going. Now I'm going to throw out something else to you. I've already mentioned these two ideas about a northern and a southern hemisphere or eastern versus western hemisphere. When we talk about maps, we use something called a compass rose. And a compass rose is basically what we use to orientate ourselves in terms of one direction or the other. And these little items here, north, south, east, west, those are called cardinal directions. Now, don't ask me why they chose the word cardinal. Describe it, because I'm going to show my ignorance and tell you I don't know. But maybe your teacher, if you're watching this with them, is smart enough to tell you something I haven't taken the time to research. Or at least I don't remember it. So you got a compass rose, you got your cardinal directions, and this determines where you're at in relation to other places on the earth. So if you're in the northern part of the, uh, the uh, world, you might be places like Europe or, or United States or, or Canada. If you're in the southern part of the world, you might be in parts of Africa or Antarctica or, or South America. Um, the compass rose helps us better orientate a map and figure out where those things are. So let's talk about places we are. All right, I'm going to draw this map it's not to scale don't get panicked you don't have to be perfect but i'm going to draw this and you tell me if you think this is what it's supposed to be and i'm going to tell you that you need to give it a shot and try to draw something too what did i just draw i drew north america and I'm going to draw this, see if you can figure this out. That's South America. Now, I, I kind of proportion this. It's not perfect. But I know there's a country right here called Ecuador. And it's called Ecuador because the equator goes right through it. This is North America. This is South America. And over here, you'd find Europe and, and, and Asia and places like that as you keep turning the globe. You're going to find new continents. This was the new world at one point. There's many people in Europe that did, know, know, did not know this existed. And when they came across and they were doing exploration, they found out there was an entirely new continent here that they did not know existed. Which takes us to one of our vocab words. Continent. Now, I hope you know what a continent is. But I'm amazed every year by the number of people who get a continent confused with a country. And they're not the same thing. Continents are huge land masses. In fact, there's only a handful of them. There are many countries. But continents, they're the largest mass, masses, of land on earth and just to make sure you understand this my little think aloud box made by nature And they're different than a, a country. This is where people get confused. Because countries are areas of land that are claimed by a government.
and I'm going to abbreviate the word government. But these ones, in case you don't know, they're made by people. Now, occasionally, you'll find a country and you'll find a continent the same. And that's the part that confuses folks. But it's not the rule. It's just the exception to the rule. And the only exception I can think of that would say they're both the same thing is Australia. So you've got a continent and you've got a country. And a country, to give you an example of what that might look like, maybe it's the United States. Maybe it's Canada. Or excuse me, Mexico. Or maybe it's Canada. It could be any of those. But a country, like I said, is, is, I can't say it's smaller than a continent, because in some cases it's the same thing, but not very often. The land itself is what nature made. That's the continent. What's inside the continent or what's defined by the people who claim that land, that's the country. Okay. And there's probably two more last minute things I should probably mention up, up here. And, and some people don't realize this. Within a country, those countries will usually have a capital. And a capital is a city, but a capital is not the same kind of city that other cities are. A capital is a unique kind of city because a capital is a city where leaders work to run a government. And that's different than a, just a city. A capital is a unique part. Now, in for instance, in the United States, we have lots of state capitals. Like in Iowa, the state capital is Des Moines. In, in California, the state capital is Sacramento. In Texas, the state capital is Austin. But as far as our country goes, we have a one country, uh, we have a one capital, and that's Washington D.C. Okay, so understand the difference between a capital and a city, and, and you'll be fine. With that in mind, just a quick review: we talked about a globe, how it's a big spear. We kind of drew these lines droopy or, or bubbled out to, to constitute the prime meridian and the equator, and we know what longitude and latitude lines are, and these do cross at the axis, and these, once again, are parallel, they never cross. We understand that these, these lines help create a northern and a southern and a eastern and a western hemisphere, and without defining those, we know what our cardinal directions are, compass rows the tool we use to show us directions. And within this globe, we've got things called continents, which are large land masses, and countries, which are not large land masses, but are areas that are claimed by government. One is made by people, one is made by nature. And every country will generally have a capital where their leaders work to run the government that controls that territory. That's it. If you have any questions, I'm sure you do. Do your best. And like I said, you can color this map up a little bit and give yourself some beautiful, beautiful look and shading, but don't make it too busy. Focus on the colors that are important, which are your kapow, um, green for transitions, red for conflict. If you do that, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Me, I'm just silly, and I like to make my poster a little bit prettier. Okay, that's it. Great job. Thank you very much for paying attention and uh, good luck.